Harry S. Truman, leading the end to a horrific World War II. How is our project related to the theme, Leadership and Legacy in History? His leadership is important because Harry S. Truman led the ending of one of the bloodiest wars in history that made Japan, one of the strongest military powers at that time, surrender. His legacy is also important because he made one of the hardest decisions in American history. This effect saved many American lives and families and many generations to come. It all started when Albert Einstein sent a letter to the current President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt. He explained that the Nazis had the equipment of making an extremely powerful bomb that can take out a whole city or port. He explained that the splitting of many uranium isotopes can cause powerful nuclear fission. Roosevelt received this letter six months after Einstein signed it. Roosevelt reacted quickly, putting Lieutenant General Leslie Groves in charge of this project. Roosevelt said to work on this project gradually, and he will use it in times when the United States needs it. On June 28, 1941, Roosevelt signed Executive Order 8807, which officially established the Manhattan Project, the code name for the working of the atomic bomb. Four years later, on July 17, 1945, when the Nazis already surrendered, Harry S. Truman, the current president of the United States at the time, went to Potsdam, Germany to have the Potsdam Conference meet with the high officials with other countries about to end the war with Japan. So, on July 17, 1945, Truman issued the Potsdam Declaration, which Emperor General Tito refused immediately. The next day, battleship the Indianapolis left California, heading to Tinian Island to deliver the first atomic bomb. On July 26, 1945, the Indianapolis arrived at Tinian Island. Right when Robert Oppenheimer, second in command of the Manhattan Project, made a petition to stop the use of the atomic bomb. Truman did not take this petition into consideration at all. Nine days later, on August 5, 1945, was when the Enola Gay left Tinian Island to drop the first atomic bomb, nicknamed Little Boy. Little Boy, with 16,000 tons of TNT, incinerated Hiroshima during 7.15 p.m. Washington time, which killed approximately 140,000 people. On August 7, 1945, Emperor Hirotito still refused to surrender. So, on August 9, 1945, Boxcar, Enola Gay's sister, dropped the second atomic bomb nicknamed Fat Man. Fat Man had 20,000 tons of TNT, which killed approximately 80,000 people. Five days later, on August 14th, Truman received from the Japanese government terms of unconditional surrender. When the word came out to the public, people ran out onto the streets with excitement and joy to celebrate this wonder. The Japanese formally surrendered on September 2nd, 1945, known as VJ Day. My fellow Americans, Supreme Allied Commander General MacArthur and Allied representatives on the battleship Missouri in Tokyo Bay. The thoughts and hopes of all America, indeed of all the civilized world, are centered tonight on the battleship Missouri. There on that small piece of American soil, anchored in Tokyo Harbor, the Japanese have just officially laid down their arms. They have signed terms of unconditional surrender. Our first thoughts, of course, thoughts of gratefulness and deep obligation, go out to those of our loved ones who have been killed or maimed in this terrible war. On land and sea and in the air, American men and women have given their lives so that this day of ultimate victory might come and assure the survival of a civilized world. No victory can make good their loss. Victory always has its burdens and its responsibilities, as well as its rejoicings. But we face the future and all its dangers with great confidence and great hope. America can build for itself a future of employment and security. Together
head of the United Nations that can build a world of peace founded on justice, fair dealing, and tolerance. As President of the United States, I proclaim Sunday, September the 2nd, 1945, to be VJ Day, the day of the formal surrender of Japan. It is not yet the day for the formal proclamation of the end of the war, nor of the cessation of hostilities. But it is a day which we Americans shall always remember as a day of retribution, as we remember that other day, the day of infamy. Japan surrendered, mm -hmm. and we had, we, we, we were beginning to, my company and division, we were beginning preparing our next invasion was Japan itself, mm -hmm. and my company was scheduled to invade, go into Tokyo, mm -hmm. and you can you imagine how many men we would have lost if we were, would have went into Tokyo. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, yes, I am glad they dropped the bomb because of bringing into the war. Oh, Henry Truman, your spirit will live on and on. Finally, one day in the middle of May, the mountain started breaking in. When she started rumbling, trees started crumbling, at old St. Helen she blew. The rocks started flying and people, they were trying to run, but it was too late. The sky was so black when the people...